So Combs became very worried. Combs Maharaj was thinking, in Vrindavan, there must be some magic oh, power. Me. There must be something magical in Vrindavan, because no matter how many demons went there, they all went on a one-way ticket, and none returned. Therefore, if I can somehow arrange to bring Krishna and Balaram outside of Vrindavan, here to Mathura, then on the excuse of worshipping the bow of Rangeshwar Mahadev, then I can kill them anyhow. Therefore, comes a called Akrur, Akrura who is the uncle of Krishna. So even though he was a great devotee of Krishna, because he was in an awkward situation living with Kams, therefore he was eating off both plates. Therefore, Kams Maharaj, he called Akura and said, you must bring Krishna and Balaram here anyhow. Therefore, Akura, he was described, he was thinking in his heart, even though I'm coming here on excuse to arrange for the destruction of Krishna and Balaram, still I am not afraid because Krishna, he is the Paramatma in the heart of everyone. He understands that I am really his devotee and well-wisher. But because of circumstances, I am somehow engaged in the service of the wicked king Kamsa. Deva Kura began going towards Vrindavan. So said of the nine limbs of devotion, Shravanam, Kizanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Parasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam. That of the nine limbs of devotion, one of them is Vandanam, or offering prayers to the Lord. Therefore, Akura, he achieved perfection by offering prayers. So his prayers are very high class, described as he was going on the road to Vrindavan. Therefore, what we think of in the stage of practice, we will achieve that in the stage of perfection. Therefore, Narottam Das Thakur has said, Sadhana Babibe Thakke, Siddha Deha Taha Pabe. Like this. Whatever you think of in the time of practice, you will definitely achieve in the time of perfection. Therefore, Krishna, Krishna's devotees, that which is related to Krishna, are described to be like a Kalpa Vriksha tree. Whatever you desire near them, you will get that result. Therefore, we should be very careful what we pray and what we think of when we chant the holy name. Otherwise, the holy name might cheat you by fulfilling some material desire. Therefore, we offer prayers. We should follow in the footsteps of Akura. As he was going towards Vrindavan, he was thinking, I wonder what will happen when I get there. He was saying, I hope that Krishna and Balaram, when they see me, they'll become very happy. And Balaram will catch me by the hand. Krishna will embrace me and call me uncle. I hope when I get there, then they will offer me a gift of a brown cow. They will welcome me, give me some foodstuffs, and talk to me with great affection. Then I can explain the situation. Therefore, he was full of these type of desire. The soul can never be without desire. A stone has no desire. But we are Atma, we have consciousness. Consciousness means desire. Therefore, Buddhists and impersonalists, they think in a stage of perfection there is no desire. But this is completely wrong. In stage of perfection, there is also desire. Desire to serve Krishna. <laughs> Therefore, Akura was thinking like this as he was going towards Vrindavan. As he came there, he saw the footprints of Krishna and Balaram in the dust. He saw the 19 symbols of the feet of Krishna in the dust of Vrindavan. And he began rolling in ecstasy. Oh, the footprints of my Lord. Then as he came to Vrindavan, exactly what he had been thinking and hoping for in his prayers, that exact thing happened. Krishna came out, oh my dear uncle Akura, embraced him. Balaramji took Akura by the hand and brought him inside to Nanda Bhavan. That time Akura, he began to a little bit change the, the mind of Krishna. Of course, inside Krishna, inside Nanda Nanda, all incarnations are there. Therefore, Dwarkadish Krishna, or, uh, Maturesh Krishna, also inside there. <coughs> they were in order to inspire a mood of, a uh, heroic mood in Krishna, Akura began describing the atrocities that Kams was performing to Devaki and Vasudev Maharaj. Gurudev one time said, even when Krishna is playing his flute at Bamsi Bhatt and calling the gopis, can he forget Devaki and Vasudev in the prison of Kams? Kams Maharaj used to put stones upon their chest and torture them. Can Krishna forget that? Therefore, Akura was talking this way. Krishna became in a mood of anger. We will go there and defeat Kamsa. That time, the gopis heard that Krishna will be leaving. 
therefore they became most distraught. All the coward boys became happy. Oh, we will go with Krishna on an adventure. But the gopis became most distressed. The gopis know everything. Therefore they know Krishna goes there. He will not return. Therefore all that night Akura stayed there and in the morning he took Krishna and Balaram upon his chariot. Sri Sukadev Goswami describes it with one hand Akura was driving the chariot and with the other hand he had his arm around the waist of Krishna otherwise he is afraid Krishna will jump off the chariot and not go to Mathura. Therefore very pathetic scene describes the gopis falling down like streaks of golden lightning lying on the ground somehow trying to block the chariot of Akura as it left. Some gopis tried to throw themselves under the wheel of Akura's chariot. Some tried to hold the reins of the horses. Some gopis could not even move. Such was their separation from Krishna. They said this is Bhagavan Milan. They are meeting Krishna but about to be separated. Therefore their separation would become in a very high way. Therefore Akura, therefore really he is a cruel, cruel means cruel, because he took Krishna and Balaram outside Vrindavan, moving the golden chariot this way and that way. He dodged between the different gopis and left. Therefore, it's described for the next. Sanatana Goswami describes after three months Krishna returned, but some places we hear in another Prakash, 100 years, the gopis stayed there. They never took bath, nor they washed their hair. Because that dust that came from the chariot of Akura, that dust was the last connection they had with Krishna. Therefore they stayed in the forest of Brindavan there at Kadamba Keri. And there they taught us how you have to weep for Krishna. Therefore, as Krishna went on the golden chariot of Akura, the time came for midday. And Akura, because he is following some vidi, some rules and regulations, at 12 o'clock is a very auspicious time to remember Krishna by mantra. Therefore, Kura leaving Krishna and Balaram on the chariot, he went to uh, Brahmarad, which is described to be the border of Vrindavan and Mathura. That time the Yamuna was flowing there, now the Yamuna has gone a little bit to the northern direction. But that time the Yamuna was flowing there. Akura leaving Krishna and Balaram on the chariot, he went there and took bath. So as he was under the water, chanting his mantra, as he went under the water, he saw Krishna and Balaram in the water. Then he became astonished. He went under a second time, he saw his Ishtadev. His Ishtadev, if I'm not mistaken, is Garbadaksai Vishnu. No? Garbadaksai Vishnu. Sitting on the bed of Shesh. Because Krishna Balaram, a little, Krishna Balaram, their forms are so human-like that maybe Akura had some small doubt. How is it possible for these two small boys to kill a great demon like Kamsa? Therefore, to dispel the fear of Akura, Krishna and Balaram manifested one of their Vaibhava Prakash in their form of Gavadaksai Vishnu and Ananta Shesh. Then Akura became worried. He said, I am seeing Krishna and Balaram in the water, but they are also on the chariot. Therefore, he was looking here and there and seeing some of the opulence of Krishna. He became very much astounded. So Sri Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says, "Padam ekam nagat brindavanam pratyaga, padam ekat ekam padam ekam gatam nagachati." The Krishna Balaram, the Soda Nandan, Rahini Nandan, they never take one step outside of Brindavan. Therefore, Sri Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says, "There at Brahmarat, the <coughs> Vasudev Nandan, Mathuresh Krishna, and Rahini Nandan, Sankasha Ram." They went onwards with Akura to Mathura and the original forms of Krishna Balaram, they returned back to Vrindavan. Therefore the boys, they were thinking, how Krishna will kill such a big demon? Therefore Krishna, to dispel the fear of the coward boys, he manifested a huge form of Vishnu. The boys began laughing, okay, now we have some confidence, you can kill Krishna Balaram. Uh, you can kill Kamsa. Therefore, as soon as Krishna... As soon as Krishna came inside to Mathura boundary, he thought, oh, this vesh, this dress of a cowherd boy is not good dress. I should get some suitable dress of the son of a king because now my father is Vasudev. Therefore, this coward dress is not good. There he saw one washerman of Kams Maharaj who was washing Kamsa's cloth. And Krishna said, my dear brother, don't you know I am Kamsa's nephew? 
Therefore, we will make your life successful by taking some charity from you. Therefore, that washerman became very angry. Oh, who do you think you are? You are like crows who steal the ghee meant for a fire sacrifice. How could low-class cowherd boys like you possibly wear the cloth that is meant for a king? Therefore, describe that washerman in his last incarnation. He was the one that abused Sita. When his wife was leaving, he said, Oh, I am not like Ram who took his wife back after 11 months in the house of another man. Therefore, that same washerman, he took birth in the pastimes of Kamsmaraj. Therefore, Krishna wanted to repay the favor from his last incarnation. Therefore, Krishna took his head off with one slap and began dressing in the robes of Kamsa. Therefore, when all the residents of Mathura heard, Oh, Krishna has come. Then they thought, maybe really, he will kill Kamsmaraj. Therefore, just like a person wants a bit of a tax break, they began offering many, many different paraphernalia for the happiness of Krishna. I just finished to one bit. <laughs> so there was, they went to the big bow of Kams Maharaj. Kams had engaged many security men to guard that bow of Lord Shiva. But Krishna went like a mad elephant. He took the bow of Kams, pulled it very hard and cracked it. That made such a loud noise. And with the edges of the bow, Krishna Balaram began killing all the guards of Kamsa. Kamsa began absorbed in fear. Therefore, when Pradikshit Maharaj asked, Oh, how Krishna can perform irreligious activities if he came here to establish religion? Then Sukadev Goswami said, Kama Dvesha Bhayatsnaya Dhyata Bhakta Surimana. Oh, Pradikshit Maharaj, I already told you, if Kams could achieve Krishna by fear, if Shishupal could achieve Krishna by envy and the go then why the gopis cannot achieve krishna by lust so kamsi became absorbed in fear of krishna so i just want to think we were in govardhan last year then we we're asking Gurudev, oh can you tell my last life can you tell my last life and Gurudev said oh i know my last life last life you were the donkey that carried the washing of kams maharaj <laughs> krishna balaram spun you and threw you back to australia so, <laughs> After that, what became can you? <coughs> when he was in the arena, <laughs> after killing Kubalya P, and he entered in the arena, then what Gopis told when Charu Mustik? Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshudon Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Guru De Namaha So this morning on the morning walk we had some Udipan. You know what Udipan is? Some stimulation. And now I'm understanding why this event took place. <laughs> because Sugata Prabhu made a challenge to Brajanath that he would wrestle him right there in front of Gurudev with his arm he's tied here. behind his back. Prabhu is here? Sugata? <laughs> but, but, then, <clears throat> but then it was decided that if Brajanath became injured, then Gurudev's service would not go on so well. So we elected another person who was Nityananda, the son of Mahibharata. So, so then, at the end of Gurudev's morning walk, they, they all gathered together in the middle. There was a grassy area, and they all prepared themselves. And Shivananda Sain Prabhu was the referee. Srila Gurudev was standing watching. And then they went arm to arm, leg to leg. <laughs> and in a very short period of time, Nityananda defended him. <laughs> and he defeated him. <laughs> so, now I'm standing here. And I'm really? now I have some udipan for the the <laughs> transcendental. <transcendence. laughs> yes, we were. 
<laughs> we were telling about your victorious uh, event this morning. Yeah, I blacked out. <laughs> he said he almost died. <laughs> I literally blacked out. I slapped down three times. And I so, <clears throat> now. Because of Rajana. Rajana. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, also, by uh, Sivananda, who allowed the cardio chokehold. <laughs> They didn't follow the rules. Okay. So, now, after Krishna and Balaram had killed the washermen, then... Kobjat. Yes, yes. So there was one lady. As, see, Krishna and Balaram were walking very victoriously through the streets of Mathura. This was actually the first opportunity that any of the Mathura Vasis would have to see these beautiful forms of Krishna and Balaram. Many people, they had heard stories because so many fruit sellers and such had gone from Mathura to Braj, to Vrindavan. So now, Krishna and Balaram, nicely dressed in all the beautiful cloth that they had taken from the uh, cloth from the washermen, <laughs> and now they proceeded forward through the streets. And as they came through the streets, there was one hunchback lady, her name was Kupja. She saw Krishna. She became very, very attracted to the beauty of Krishna. And she thought, oh, how beautiful, such a personality. I wish that I could have relationship with him. Her heart was attracted to Krishna, and she had some sandalwood pulp. So she came and offered it to Krishna, this sandalwood pulp, and Krishna accepted from her and it was smeared on Krishna's transcendental body and on his limbs. And at that time, oh, Krishna, he performed a very wonderful activity by taking her chin and uh, standing and pulling on her feet. And at that time, he raised her up and her hunchback was straightened out and suddenly she became very, very exquisitely beautiful lady. So at this time, Krishna, he promised to her that at another time, because she wanted him to come uh, and to visit in her home. She was like a society girl. So Krishna promised that later on he would come. After this, Krishna proceeded through the streets and then it was at the end of the night, then the next morning. No, it was the next morning when he came to the wrestling room, yes? Yeah. So, so Kamsa, as we know, Kangsa had made every possible arrangement that Krishna would somehow or other be killed before he even arrived at the wrestling arena. And of course, at the wrestling arena, he had the final arrangements made there. But in order to try to stop Krishna and Balaram from even entering into the wrestling arena, oh, there was a huge, gigantic elephant, which was named Kuvalaya Bhid. And this elephant was situated just in front of the entryway to this huge wrestling arena where Kangsa was waiting inside. So as Krishna and Balaram approached this entryway, suddenly this huge gigantic elephant, it looked at Krishna Balaram and now the elephant trainer started directing the elephant to attack Krishna and Balaram. So now Krishna was facing this huge elephant who was very quickly coming toward him. And Krishna sidestepped and went around the elephant. And at that time, Krishna, he took the tail of the elephant and pulled the elephant very strongly. Then he climbed up on top of the elephant and killed the elephant trainer. And then he, with his own hands, he killed the elephant. And the elephant crashed to the ground. Now, Krishna and Balaram, in a very victorious way, just like two lions will kill uh, an elephant. Now they took the tusks of the elephant off of the elephant. And now, with very great jubilation, and speckled with the blood of the elephant, now they were decorated beautifully for their entry into the, into the uh, arena, wrestling arena of Kamsa. So each Krishna and Balaram were carrying one of the huge, gigantic tusks on their shoulders. And now Krishna, Balaram, and all the cowherd boys, they became, began merrily marching and dancing and singing and entering into the wrestling arena. Now as they entered into the arena, 
there was a huge audience there. All so many Mathura Vasis were there. And all different types of people were there. And situated up on a huge throne was the evil King Kans. And who was standing, who was watching the entryway, hoping that Krishna and Balaram would not even enter. But now he received the report that even the elephant did not stop them. So Krishna and Balaram, they, now they began to enter into the wrestling arena. And uh, Vasudev and Devaki in chains were standing there next to Kanks up there. And now Krishna and Balaram entering into the wrestling arena. It was announced that this wrestling will take place. Actually the cowherd boys, they always wrestle amongst themselves. And so this, they thought that this would be a very fun activity. And when they came into the wrestling arena, they saw these two wrestlers that Kangsa had appointed to wrestle with Krishna and Balaram. And these two wrestlers, they were not ordinary size. They were huge, gigantic, muscular wrestlers. And they were the most powerful wrestlers in the entire kingdom. They could practically take any other human being and snap them in half with their own bare hands. So now, as Krishna entered in, and the people of the, in the wrestling arena, they saw the delicate beauty of Krishna, how his limbs were so soft, so delicate and beautiful looking, uh, and how his lotus eyes were so attractive. And they thought, these two sweet young boys, they will wrestle with these ferocious, gigantic wrestlers? Oh, this is unfair. This is very unfair. They began protesting and protesting. How Kans was <coughs> filling Krishna? How Vrajabhasi? Yes. How others? Yes. So, as, yes. so as Krishna was entering in, all the different people in the wrestling arena, they were seeing Krishna. And they were... So through their eyes, they were seeing Krishna in completely different ways. Why? Because Krishna, he is the uh, supreme center of the entire creation, the absolute truth. And he is also the very support or the foundation of all rasas. So everyone in the arena who saw Krishna entering in, they had their own particular vision of him. Oh, just like the yogis, there were certain yogis in the arena. When they saw Krishna entering in, they thought, Oh, here is the Paramatma, the super soul, who we meditate upon. He is walking and entering directly into the arena. Oh, when the, uh, the various ordinary citizens in the arena saw Krishna, they thought, Oh, here is the most powerful uh, king-like personality who is, re who is entering into this arena. When uh, Vasudev and Devaki saw Krishna entering in, they thought, Oh, here is our dearly beloved little child. When King Kamsa saw Krishna entering, what did he see? Here is death personified, who is entering into this arena. And in this way, all the different people, when the uh, Mathura Ramanis, the very beautiful ladies of Mathura, for the first time they saw Krishna and they thought to themselves, this is certainly Cupid himself, the most attractive male personality we have ever seen. And they even began to glorify Krishna. In fact, they glorified the Braja Gopis in so many different ways with so many different verses. And they described that who can possibly imagine the good fortune of the Braja Gopis? Because those Braja Gopis, they are constantly meditating upon Krishna within their hearts and they see him in his original state. Just like a lion which is running through the jungle looks very beautiful. But if you put that same lion into a cage, it is not as beautiful. So how fortunate are the Braja Gopis Oh, that they have seen Krishna in that condition, in the beautiful forest of Vrindavan. They have danced with him, they have met with him. And the, uh, the Mathura Ramanis felt like this, that how much more fortunate are the gopis, how much more exalted they are than themselves. And they always uh, glorified the gopis in this way, that in their hearts, Krishna is riding on the chariot of their hearts, Urukrama Chitta Jana, that they are that Urukrama Krishna, who is the perfor performer of all glorious activities 
and wonderful pastimes. He is constantly riding in the hearts of the Brajagopis who perform all of their duties in their homes, constantly singing about Krishna and remembering Him. Therefore, He enters within their heart and always remains there. So like this, all the different people in the wrestling arena, they had this vision of Krishna. So now the wrestlers, when they saw Krishna and Balaram, they also saw him as being as powerful as a thunderbolt. But yet, Krishna looked so very beautiful and young, just like a young teenage boy. So, uh, Krishna and Balaram, they also mentioned to the wrestlers that, oh, we are just young boys and you are such, such huge, gigantic, grown men, so very strong. Perhaps this is not a very good match. But the wrestlers, they said, but we know how powerful you are because we've heard about all the demons that you have been able to kill. Putana, huge, gigantic, Rakshashi witch, 12 miles long, you killed her. Even as a baby, you killed so many other demons, Aristasura, Keshi demon, and so many others. We also heard that you lifted a huge, gigantic mountain. So, therefore, we think that you are, you are well matched with us. So, now we should wrestle. Finally, it was decided that they would uh, wrestle. And Chanu and Mushtika, they each had the opponent of Krishna and Balaram. So now, when the wrestling match, the signal came to begin the wrestling match, then immediately uh, Krishna uh, went arm to arm, leg to leg with, I don't know, Chanu or Mushtika. And then Balaram, he went arm to arm, leg to leg with the other. And they were pulling and they were pushing one another. And in this way the wrestling was going on. And the huge gigantic wrestlers were trying with all of their might to completely tear apart and rip apart Krishna and Balaram. They were trying to beat them with their fists. But in this way, Krishna and Balaram, they showed their power and their strength. And within a very short time, Krishna and Balaram grabbed Chanur and Mushtika, wheeled them around, threw them down on the ground, and immediately their life was lost. And now Krishna turned and he faced Kangsa. And you can imagine now how much Kangsa was terrified because every attempt he had made failed completely. Now even Krishna, now Kamsa was trying to call all of his guards to come and arrest Krishna and Balaram. But Krishna, he began to stalk just like a lion will stalk in the jungle. And he proceeded directly toward Kamsa. And Kamsa was standing there on the top, of, up above. Krishna quickly climbed up there, jumped up on the top. He grabbed Kamsa in his hands and he threw him onto the ground by his hair. And Krishna jumped down on top of him, began to beat him, and immediately Kangs lost his life. This was Kangsa who had terrified everyone, the entire kingdoms. He had conquered all different kings by his great powers. And now Krishna, just very easily, he threw Kangsa down and killed him and then he was finished. Then the other soldiers, they also tried to come and Krishna and Balaram finished all of them. So finally at this time, all the people in the arena, some of them, they were crying out loud, aghast with this, with this scene. But most of them were rejoicing because Kansa was such an evil king. And now Krishna and Balaram, they came before their mother, Vasudev and Devaki, who were standing there. And they, and Vasudev and Devaki, Oh, now their hearts became overwhelmed with paternal affection for Krishna and Balaram. They took their hathakri bedi and everything else. They took away the chains on their hands and now Vasudeva and Devaki began to embrace Krishna and Balaram. After that, after that, can you tell something? No. After that, Kans was killed, then his wife, Kans' wife came and began to weep bitterly. Then Krishna, what? Kans uh, that and took Kans' dead body to Dhruva and he did sanskar, and then he returned back. 
and at once there was no king at that time kans was killed now up sukukrase he took all the paraphernalia of abhishek of krishna but krishna told i cannot be king by the cause of anyone jadumar jadumar so with that paraphernalia he made abhishek of ugrasen maharaj and he became king krishna told that we are we will deva servant whole demi gods whole world will come to you and pay tax to you so don't worry after that anyhow in the evening the krishna and baldev went to nanda baba who was just staying near by jamna river out of the town he was waiting and waiting that when balram balram krishna will come but all mathura vasi devki vasudev all are telling oh you are my son you are your father or mother is devki vasudev you cannot go to vrindavan again anyhow they came nand baba was waiting krishna told the baba now all the sons of devki and vasudev are killed so i want that for some days i should be here in mathura and give consolation to them hmm? baldev prabhu told i cannot go there uh, i cannot be in mathura accept krishna if krishna will stay i will stay otherwise you are my father and mother i don't know who is devki and who is vasudev because you have nourished me from and you have given life so you really you are my and father after that anyhow krishna told that oh baba vasudev is your friend now he is in calamity he is suffering so for some days i will be here and after that i will return telling this he gave so much ornament and other things and nand baba weeping returned back to him. now at once after some days he called gargacharya and told him to give him upanayan upanayan you know sacred sacred and then all were invited from here and there but very near by jashoda and nand baba were not invited why they knew that if nand baba and jashoda maiya will come then krishna will return back anyone cannot check him so knowingly this and they not invited but when Krishna and Balram were set. They will give him given saffron cloth, danda, and khana, and chhatra, umbrella. And Guru they have told that now you should go to bake at least seven doughs. Oh, Krishna and Baldev in saffron cloth with the danda, oh, very beautifully folded. He was searching at that time, like this. Where is my mother? Where is my father? Hmm? First, I go to mother. Devi was just standing there. Was Devi was just standing? First, a person should go to mother. But he was oh, searching mother. Mother, where mother? My mother is Soda, and he has told. at the time of opening i will fulfill your whole jolly yeah uh, that that bad not like this hmm? i will fulfill everything you 
Oh, where mother, 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 and he became saint. Yasudev, Devaki, and Vasudev, and all Mathura Vasi. They are thinking how love and affection of Nanda and Yasuda to Krishna. After that, anyhow, Krishna was, was in broad and he was sent to at once Guru Kut, that he should anyhow forget this, that he is son of Nanda and Yasuda. And he went there and in 60 days, 64 days. He learnt everything and he baked, went to bake uh, went with Sudama sticks and how in the end Guruani, Guru Mother told him that you are very extraordinary. Please give me, bring me my son who is drowned in ocean in any fair Prabhav. And then Krishna Bhakti, directly with Baldev, he went and he brought his son. And he was Madhu Manga. <laughs> in this way, now the question comes. Krishna returned to Vrindavan. By this form he could not. Though he is always in Vrindavan, but not in this form, in Upper Katrina. And from there he went to Dwarka. Never returned. He has promised with the gopis, I ask say, in day or two day, per so, I must come. And that is why gopis and prajmasis are keeping their life that he must come because he has promised and he is satya sankalpa. He must come. So, anyhow they are. Now the question that anyone, Krishna, always thinking in the ocean of Braja, and when there is love and affection more, anyone wants to be there. So surely Krishna always sinking in the love and affection in the prison. Why he came to Mathura? Not such love like Jasoda, Nanda Baba, Prajivarsi, he is Sakha. There is no Govardhan and other things. So why he returned back? If he returned back, say anyhow, after killing Kans, why he could not return to Mathura, Vindavan, Nandagao? Why? And if he does not come, returns back, then he is very powerful. He can take all the gopis there in Dwarka. Why he is not taking? So, all these questions have been answered in thousand days. If we will have time, then we will discuss all the things. Also, we will discuss Pramargit. Pramar Geet, Jugal Geet, Gopi Geet, Benu Geet. These are five lives of Panch, like Panch Prana. So now time is finished. So we want to finish here. And any time again next year, we will try to explain the Dwarka Leela how he defeated Kansa, how Mahabharat and how all other happenings we will describe. Go Prima!
าคูไทยวันเป็นไทยที่ว่าผู้ใหญ่นบมันมีปัญหาผมจะมาทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุกทุก More than 10,000 oh, devotees will be there. Hari Katha will be there, and we shall come. We will shall accumulate. Oh, know the Dham nine islands, and the story of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will be there. Go, Prema. Hari Go. Now, Shaman Kumar will come, and who who has helped it in this festival? I want to give them thanks and my heartly blessing. Drama play I believe really? that <coughs> this festival is successful. Yeah. 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 All this I am again to Marin Dasya, Ganandana Salakaya, Jaksu Emile Tamjina Tasme Shri Gurdev Namaha. So Srila Gurdev has ordered me to stand up here and speak something about the reasons for Mahaprabhu's descent and the teachings he made in his descent. But before I again, please allow me to offer hundreds of Dandavat pranams to Srila Gurudev and to all the devotees here who are much more advanced than me. When I look in the crowd, I can see many senior God brothers and God sisters. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I think if you're going to understand the reasons for Mahaprabhu's descent, it is important well, actually, first, if you're going to understand what Mahaprabhu spoke and what he taught and the lessons we are to derive from his descent, we need to understand why he came. From Srila Gurudev's teachings, we know that there are both internal and external reasons for his descent. Internally, we know that to love God is so joyful and so beautiful and so ecstatic that the Lord himself wanted to taste what it was like to love God. So he adopted the mood of Shrimati Radhika and descended and took her complexion said that he was able to relish this. But this is the internal reason. The external reason for his descent is he came to give what no other incarnation of the Lord has ever given before. Sometimes the Lord comes and he is very in Aishvara mood and very fierce. But in the mood of Mahaprabhu, he came to give love of God. Or not Ajvala Prem. He came to give the holy name. In this age of Kali Yuga, we're very fallen. And there's not so many things that we can accomplish. However, we can chant the holy name. Everybody. And everybody has in their heart an undiscovered treasure that can be released. This flow of love of God can be released by chanting the holy name. And so this is what Mahaprabhu came to give. Love of Radha and Krishna conjugal. So when he came with these reasons, he gave certain teachings. And the teachings he gave is one by his practice and by his example. He was a perfect sannyas. The other, re the other teaching he gave is the distribution of the holy name. Everywhere. We know that he came across Jagai and Mare. Jagai, we're all like Jagai and Mare, actually. They were running around and they were behaving terribly. But Mahaprabhu still gave the holy name because he is so merciful. And we know that he gave this holy name so that we can attain bhakti. And Shura Gurula Dev the other day was describing to us what is bhakti. And he said he wants us to understand what is bhakti. He talked about the gradations of bhakti. And Gurudev told us we need to understand what is bhakti for two reasons. One, so that we are not affected by any misconceptions about what our goal is. And two, so that we are able to know what our goal is. In many ways, I was thinking when he was saying this, in many ways the mind is like a courtroom. And the issue, it's true, and the issue is how to be happy. If in court one lawyer gets up and says, oh, you should do this just because, and gives no reason, then the judge will go, this is rubbish, get out, you have no authority, you have no reasoning. However, Srila Gurudev is like the best advocate, and he is the advocate in the courtroom of our mind, and he is saying, you should do this, and you'll become happy because A, B, C, because this is bhakti, this is what will make you happy. Not this material life, not our relationships, not this body, what will make you happy is love of God. And this 
is why we need to understand the gradations of bhakti. This is what Mahaprabhu came to give. And it's within all your hearts, and Srila Gurudev is travelling to unlock the treasure of your heart, to give up our foolish ways with our mind and our body and our heart, chant the holy name and try to serve Gurudev as best as possible. <laughs> Like Hare Krishna, I'd like to thank uh, the devotees in Hawaii for organizing such a beautiful festival. And as Shri Gurudev said, there is uh, the second part of the Bhagavatam Katha, the five main Geets, Gopi Geet, uh, Brahmar Geet, Venu Geet. And he is going to continue this Bhagavad Katha in the next festival of this year, which will be in Houston from 30th of May to 4th of June. So on behalf of the Houston Sangha, I would like to invite all the devotees to please come and attend the festival in Houston. And we will we are making arrangements so everyone can very nicely stay there and spend the time listening to the Harikatha from Shil Gurudev and all the other senior sannyasis. Hari Bhav. One thing I want to tell you. I have bring you here. So powerful Harikatha is done. But sometimes I see to whom I have given second initiation, they have left their upavit and not chanting and remembered properly. Even not meditating three times the month that I gave. <laughs> but still they are coming. I want that they should be strong. Always they should read Upadeshamrita and Manasikha. Hmm? And in that what Gurudev has given mantra. Strongly they should meditate and chant that name. Otherwise how they will have gained? So my request that all those who have taken Upanayan, they should meditate three times these months and then they will realize something. Gaur Pramanande. Drama player, be ready. Hare Krishna. So Sri Lukurian has asked me to stand up and thank all those devotees, everyone who is involved in organizing this wonderful festival. So obviously, first of all and foremost, I'd like to express my gratitude from the bottom of my heart, also on behalf of all the devotees here in Hawaii. I'm sure all the devotees who have come here and all the devotees who are watching around the world via webcast. Thanks so much to Sri Lukurian for coming and providing this wonderful experience. <laughs> Secondly, I'd like to thank so much all the senior devotees, especially the Tridandi Sinyasi Gun, Sripad Madhav Maharaj, Padmana Maharaj, Nemi Maharaj, Shroti Maharaj, Damodar Maharaj, Gudar Prabhu, Bhagavat Prabhu, Rajanath Prabhu, Shamarani Didi, Bhunda Didi, and all Sri Lukudai's other very, very close disciples. Prem Prayojan Prabhu is also here. And as far as all those devotees who perform so many services throughout this program, in the kitchen, headed by Shikhandi Didi, Sudarshan Prabhu, Man Mohan Prabhu, Shama Priya Didi, Nilachala Didi, uh, Pran Govinda Prabhu, Tilak Raj Prabhu, Pankaj and his wife, Nityananda Prabhu, Gorahari Prabhu, Gopavalabha, Harivalabha Lalita, Mr. and Mrs. Verma. And as far as the organization goes, I would like to thank very much my father, Gopavinda Pal Prabhu. He's not here. I would like to thank him. Also, Nidhari Prabhu and his wife, Baba Trini Didi. Mr. Uncle Raghunath and his wife Taruni, Champa Kalata, and Chandrika Didi, who had the hardest job in the whole program collecting festival fees from all the devotees. So, on her behalf, as well as my behalf, I'd like to apologize to all the devotees if there was any offense in collecting these fees. It was a very difficult task. Um, we'd like to thank Goloka Prabhu, Indra Dev Prabhu, Rupa Manohar Prabhu, Vrindavan Prabhu, Kamala Kanta Prabhu, one from Hilo, also one from Germany. Rohini Nandan Prabhu and his wife Anandini, 
Kamalakshi, Krishna Kanti Prabhu, who has um, provided all this sound system and made sure everything is running through. Um, and as far as in the drama cast, we have Sridham Prabhu and his family, all his young children. We have Mangala Didi and her family. We have this, and on the webcast, we have Stoka Krishna Prabhu, Achuta Prabhu, and Isha Prabhu, who have provided this so all the world can watch this program. And then also, um, lastly, I'd like to thank so much our dear friend Gorsinda Prabhu. In May, Sri Lugurde was in Oahu, he was doing writing there, and it came the, the um, occasion of Sringadev's appearance day. And he left Oahu over there and he came to Hilo for a few days. We thought to celebrate this occasion of Sringadev's appearance day. So after a few days when he was getting ready to leave from the airport, he asked us, do you know why I've come? And we were all thinking, oh, because he would like to, um, you know, celebrate this occasion with all the devotees here in Hilo. But he said, no, no, that's not the reason. The only reason I have come here is to see Gorsundar Prabhu. So I'm so thankful that Gorsundar Prabhu is here because I know it's a very, very big inspiration for Srila Gurudev to come here and to perform this Vyasa Puja festival now for three years, four years, and hopefully many, many years into the future. So I hope that we can um, host Srila Gurudev for this occasion as well as all the devotees. I hope you all can come every year for many years into the future. Thank you very much. The inspiration we receive from this person is very, very deep, and although she's not here, her spirit lives on with us so much, and she started this festival, and by her inspiration, everything is continuing for so many years, and this person is my mother, she moved for three years. information that as you know you're you're being heard all over the world all over Africa and Asia and America yeah. and India we just heard that even Premananda Prabhu in Madhura has the whole group there watching you right now yeah.